Hey guys and welcome back to another video on my channel. This is the earliest I've ever filmed a video. It's 8.30 in the morning, but I have somewhere to be and this is the only time that I had to film. So I got up early, I'm sitting here and I'm going to film for you guys now. But before we get into today's video, I do just wanna show you my Halloween shirt for today. It's Frankenstein. And yeah, I'm not gonna ramble too much because this video is long and I wanna be able to finish filming it. So with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. Today we're going to be talking about a haunting case and I feel like we haven't covered one of these in a very long time. But then again, I kind of stopped making videos for a while so maybe that's why. But this one is super, super interesting and I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as I enjoyed research. So I was looking for topics to discuss for like Halloween topics and I thought that ghosts were perfect and I came across this article on Mysterious Universe and I tried to look more into this case and I did find a few articles but the most detailed one that I came across was the one on Mysterious Universe so I'm going to link that down below for you guys but today we're going to be talking about Ian Davidson and the strange haunted house that he moved into. So Ian Davidson was a popular actor in London in the 1930s and I kept seeing that he was a successful actor and I couldn't find anything on him online but that's because he was a theater actor not a movie actor which makes so much sense. I was so confused trying to research to find more information about him but in 1932, he decided that he was done with the city life. He didn't want to do it anymore. And he wanted to follow out his dream with the money that he had saved up from acting and move to the countryside. He wanted to completely remove himself from the city, buy his dream home in the country and move out there. He decided to look for a home in Kent to retire to. And he did come across what he described as his dream home. But this dream home would take a dark turn. The property that Ian had purchased was known as Brandon Farms, and this was not your typical dream home, and it wasn't what you'd think a dream home would be. The property was extremely run down. It was allegedly infested with rats. All of the wood on the home was decaying and moldy. The grounds of the home were completely caving in. It had like a metal roof that was almost completely rusted over, but Ian really liked the idea of moving into this home and working on it and building it to his dream home, so he saw a lot of potential in this property. Immediately after Ian moved into the home, a lot of strange things started to happen. One of the most notable things that was happening when Ian moved into the home was this insistent non-stop tapping that would come through the windows and the walls while Ian was trying to sleep. Initially, he would get up in the middle of the night and look around and try to see where this tapping was coming from, but after never being able to find the source of this tapping, he just explained it away as the wood in the house settling. However, while Ian was trying to ignore these sounds that were coming from the walls and the windows of the house, they started to escalate. They went from scratching to like this light tapping and then they became this loud thud. There was scratching involved and then it escalated so much to the point that it sounded like somebody walking around the home with heavy footsteps, even though Ian knew that he was the only person on the property. One night while Ian was trying to sleep, he heard what sounded like somebody running around the inside of the home and then all of a sudden there was a huge bang as if something in the home had fallen over or something like that and this bang was so loud that it took, shook the entire house. But just like every other time, Ian got up to investigate thinking that maybe the roof caved in or something like that. And when he got up to investigate, he found absolutely nothing. There was no damage to the home, nothing had fallen over. There was no explanation to explain what the big bang was. And these sounds would just continue to get more and more intense. He started to hear fierce growling. And on some occasions he would even hear these like blood curdling screams. He started to always have the feeling that somebody was constantly watching him. And he would lose sleep so much that he felt constantly fatigued. But Ian wasn't the only one who was experiencing these strange things within the home. He would frequently have guests staying over who would report feeling like they were always being watched while they were within the home. They would hear strange noises and when they slept over, a lot of them would have these really terrifying dreams that mostly revolved around strangulation, which is really messed up and scary. There was one room in particular that just had a really sinister dark feel to it and if I'm not mistaken I think that this would have been the spare room in the upper level of the home. Once you went into this room it was said that the temperatures in this room would change dramatically in the span of seconds and everybody who would go in there would feel this overwhelming sense of dread and a lot of the people who would go into this room would become so dizzy that they would faint without any reason why and any warning. 
If any of even Ian's guests tried to stay in this room, they would fall asleep very quickly, but then they would have these horrible dreams about being strangled, and they would almost feel the hand coming up around their neck. This got so bad that nobody would enter that room for more than a few seconds, and it became known as the box room because the only thing that this room was used for was to store boxes. But this wasn't the only room in the home that was like this. There was another room on the main floor, which was quite large. And this room, when you entered it, same thing, change of temperature, people would enter this room and feel very fatigued and uncomfortable and like they were being watched. And on one occasion, they even found these huge, unexplainable claw marks in the wood on the ground in this room. A man and his wife had been staying in the attic room in Ian's home for a visit when they would see what was the first ghost to ever show itself while Ian was living in the home. This man who was visiting Ian was sitting on the end of his bed when he claimed to have seen a woman walking through his room carrying what appeared to be some kind of like tumbler. He called out to this woman to ask who she was and what she was doing in their space, but the woman didn't answer. And when she didn't answer, this man picked up a slipper and threw it at her. And allegedly the slipper went right through the woman and then she just completely vanished into thin air. Can you imagine if you're calling out to somebody and they don't answer you the first time so you pick something up and just whip it at them? That seems very dramatic, but it's kind of funny. After the first sighting with this woman, she started to be seen more frequently within the home. She was always seen wearing a gray dress and it always appeared as if she was looking for something. And if anybody took notice of her or tried to talk to her, she would then just completely vanish into thin air. It was also said that a lot of the people who saw this woman were overcome with an irrational feeling of complete sadness after seeing her. After this woman became more frequently sighted in the home, there were other things that became more relevant. There were always shadows and things like that being seen all around. And there were even other ghosts that were spotted on a regular basis. One of these in particular was a stocky little man who would stomp around the house and seem very irritated. But this little man and this woman didn't seem scary. They didn't really have any bad feelings. When you saw the woman, you would feel sad, but they didn't seem frightening or anything like they had ill intent. They were just kind of there. There. But some of these spirits weren't as harmless as these other two. There was a man who started being seen quite frequently in the lower level of the home in that large room and he was known as the grinning man. He would always appear with this really sinister smile across his face. He would appear on one side of the room and then vanish into the fireplace. This specific ghost would only appear while the sun was setting or in the evening after the sun had already set. He was never seen during the day and you would usually be warned of his presence or that he was going to make an appearance when the temperature would randomly and dramatically drop in a room. He was also often accompanied by a black cat which could be seen around the time he either just before he appeared or just after he vanished. He would only ever be seen for about five minutes before vanishing again but his presence was much more sinister and you could feel really like bad vibes off of this ghost in particular. On one night in particular Ian was hanging out in that large room on the ground level of the home and he had visitors in the home who had brought in with them their dog. Ian himself also had a dog. He had a Great Dane and this Great Dane's name was Peter and Ian was hanging out in this room with the door closed and one of the dogs started scratching on the door to be let in. So Ian was hanging out in this room and he decided to open the door to let the dogs in but as soon as both of the dogs came into the room it was visible that the dogs were uncomfortable and they seemed really off and just anxious and uncomfortable and agitated. All of a sudden the temperature in the room dropped dramatically and Ian became very, very dizzy. All of a sudden during this dizzy spell, it appeared as if the door to the room completely vanished and then Ian became aware of a presence that was in the room with him. This absolutely terrifying, grinning man. This person was a man and stood over six feet tall and was dressed in a weird green, brown, and red costume. It is also said that this man was very hard to look at and had an absolute look of hatred over his face. He was very ominous and had this grin over his face that showed his yellow teeth. Ian yelled at this thing, who are you, or something along those lines, and then the entity laughed before completely vanishing. That was the first encounter that Ian or anybody else had with that grinning man. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of that story. This, as you can imagine, was extremely stressful and scary for Ian that there were all of these entities walking around his home and he didn't feel comfortable in his own space. So he decided to call in a psychic and paranormal investigator by the name of Ronald Kubak. 
The first room that Ronald decided to investigate was the room known as the box room and immediately after going in there, Ronald said that he felt the feeling of malevolence and dread and he just felt like an over all bad vibe going into this room. Ronald decided that he was going to attempt to stay in the box room overnight and when he did, he faced the same fate that everybody else who stayed in that room faced. He felt an invisible hand come up around his neck and choke him and his hair was being pulled and while this was happening, Ronald was calling out for help so all of the other men who were staying in the home came running to help out Ronald. When they arrived to this room, the choking and the strangling apparently didn't stop. So all of these men were fighting off this unseen entity. Eventually, the strangling did come to an end and this left Ronald gasping for air and allegedly he'd almost lost his life because of how intense this whole entire situation was. Realizing that whatever was haunting this home was too much for Ronald to handle alone, he decided to call in other psychics and medians to come and help him and that is when they came to the conclusion that the entities that were living in Ian's home were part of a black magic cult and they used to perform satanic rituals within the home that Ian was now living in. They were able to identify the grinning man as George Tarver, who was a practicing occultist in the 16th century. He was said to be an absolutely horrible, horrible man, even worse of a man than he was a spirit, going as far as to sacrifice his own daughter during a ritual by strangling her to death and then burying her. The woman in the gray dress was, I guess, George's mistress, and the little stocky man was once a follower of George Tarver. However, he didn't want the mistress to be murdered, so he, I guess, kind of like stood his ground on that, which led both the woman and this stocky little man to be strangled to death by George Tarver. It was told to Ian by the psychics that the spirits, in particularly George, were unhappy with the fact that Ian came in here and was re-renovating the property and doing all of this stuff to the home that was leaving these spirits unsettled and making them very angry. However, after being told this information, instead of leaving, Ian just decided to stay put. He decided he paid the money for this property and he was going to make this into his home. He wasn't gonna stop the renovations and he was just going to stay there. The spirit of George was very unhappy with this information and he would really go above and beyond to make Ian stay there completely unhappy. So one day Ian was in the upper level of his home when he noticed that black cat that would usually always appear with George. And then he noticed that George was also in the room with him as well. George was wearing that horrifying grin that he would always wear when spotted with in the home. And Ian was scared, but he decided that enough was enough. And although he was quite frightened by this entity, he wasn't putting up with this anymore. He told George that this was now his home and George was not welcome here and he needed to get out. George seemed very shocked by this and he slowly started to fade. A few days after this, the woman in gray would appear to Ian and for the first time ever, she would acknowledge him. She nodded at him and then she vanished into thin air. The evening after this had happened, that little stocky man appeared at the foot of Ian's bed, seeming much more pleasant this time. He nodded at Ian and gave him kind of like this goodbye gesture while smiling and then he vanished as well. It was thought by the psychics who were investigating this home that both of these spirits were enslaved by George and because Ian had stood up to him, it now allowed those spirits to move on to the other side and they were no longer enslaved by this man. And after that, none of the ghosts were ever seen in this house ever again. Over the span of time, Ian continued to renovate the home and it did end up turning into this absolutely beautiful property and it was even ghost free. No one really knows whether this story is fact or not, but I did think that it was a pretty interesting story to share around the Halloween season because of the intense ghost presence in the story. But guys, that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.